This is the very first episode of the Early Access Hall of Shame. This is a new video series where I'm highlighting the horrible games that take Steam's early access business model and completely wipe their asses with it. And what's more fitting as an inaugural episode than one of the worst, Starforge, brought to us by the guys at Code Hatch. Initially, Starforge looked like it was going to be an amazing game. Procedural, customizable weapons. I mean, check out this section of video that Code Hatch made as a prototype. It's fantastic looking. Welcome to the Gun Factory. In Starforge, we have unlimited guns generated in real time. Just look at these masterpieces. The Gun Factory sorts its creations by power and for maximal efficiency. These multi-purpose instruments can be broken apart, repaired, and eventually you'll be able to construct your own, piece by piece. I assure you, we only deliver the finest selection of weaponry to the new planet. Unlimited voxel terrain, RPG progression, bunch of different tile sets. The game just looked like it was going to be incredible. I mean, take, check out some more of this prototype video. Predictably, their Indiegogo campaign was a success. They raised 135,000 some odd dollars. Now, after we've taken a look at some of these trailers, let's see how the final results turned out. And here's a huge spoiler alert. They didn't actually get finished with the game before calling it done. You start off as usual with this sort of game, appearing with a pretty much discourteous abruptness on the planet's surface. You're nude, but you have a beacon to signal other players that's useless in the single player, a healing syringe, and this universal mining tool slash weapon thing. Like so many other games like this, you have the metabolism of a weasel on meth. Your hunger bar diminishes rapidly, meaning that you're spending almost all of your time in the game running around gathering food. And Well, how do you get food, you might ask? Well, you have to kill these little worms and warthogs and little creatures and grab these pieces of meat off of the corpse. They also inexplicably carry blueprints and materials sometimes with them too, just so you know. Oh, and they also don't always have meat on them, so you'll end up killing a lot of them before you get a meal. And what, do you cook these little pieces of meat for your food? Uh, no. You need four meats, and you squish them together to make these green syringes. And then you inject the little green syringe into you to refill your hunger bar. Um, yeah, I guess your mouth got sewn shut before making the interstellar trip to this new planet. There's no farming or anything like that, just green syringes. <laughs> the building system's actually pretty good, but there's no procedural tile sets that they talk about. Only a few different block types. There's wood, there's concrete, there's steel, etc, etc. Unfortunately, the object placement is, well, if you'll pardon the expression, fucked up. Everything ends up being all crooked when you put it down pretty much all the time. There's no way to get it to set flat on the earth here. The crafting system is pretty awful. You just select what you want to craft, wait a few seconds, and bam. For some recipes, you need to be near this forging terminal. You know, and of course, my personal favorite mark of all substandard crafting systems and games, the first tier of guns and weapons in the game are all rusty. Yep, you're making rusty weapons from scratch, never thinking that you might actually just create the same weapon without corrosion or wear on it. The creatures flop around and roll down hills like drunks on a Saturday night.
The physics in the game are absolutely ridiculous. Blows from hostile creatures and the player flying, and the creatures fling each other around like hacky sacks. It's hilarious. The dumb little worms crawl up sheer surfaces only to tumble back down again. The cornerstone of the lousy crafting system are these little blueprints you find. Anything you want to craft that's on the lowest tier you'll need a blueprint for. There's no mining, well, there's mining, but all the materials are sticking up in these zit-like structures that sit on the ground, or they're just open patches on the ground. You'll never need to dig into anywhere to get steel or whatever you need. Unfortunately, the game being in the unfinished state that it's in, all of the building materials and weapons are essentially the same. All the rifles do the same damage, all the building blocks seem to have the same hit points, and all that kind of thing. Not that it really matters, the creatures don't attack the threshold of your base at all. You know, check this out, <laughs> this is funny. All you have to do is slam the door in the angry creature's face and it's completely helpless. He's like, oh, hello up there, I'll just wait down here for you. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not too scary. The weapons workshop, the procedural tile sets, all that is missing. There's no way to customize any guns or building blocks, contrary to the Indiegogo promises that were made. Speaking of the trailer promos, they show a siege-like battle between a mob of these leech creatures and some players. Well, let's see how this sort of scenario works in the real released game. Now, the leeches around my base here seem to be contentious to wander around in circles. Let's see if we can inspire them to come attack me. Now, I'll pop up a shot here, see if I can attract them. Here comes one. Oops, he's having trouble. He's falling down like he's drunk. Creatures pop in constantly when they respawn. Sometimes they fall into view. There's these strange structures that don't do anything apart from occasionally coughing up items and blueprints. Not sure what they're supposed to do. Not sure why they're there. There's this big mining drill that does nothing other than show a beam of light into the sky. I guess you can use it for navigation, I suppose. When you sleep in your sleeping bag to pass the time, it just shifts the nighttime to daytime with no animation or any indication that you've gone to sleep at all. It even rains in caves. Here, <laughs> check this out. This is hilarious. Oh, and the infinite voxel terrain? Well, here it is. Leave this red border and it says, Prisoner, return to the protective zone, and starts taking off your health. Which is odd because the story I heard last behind the game is that you're a colonist, not a prisoner. They probably intended to change it at some point and never got around to it. So, no infinite terrain either. They managed to get none of their promised features into the game, and four people paid a thousand dollars for this game on Indiegogo. A thousand dollars. For this, Code Hatch wins the very first Hall of Shame award for their abysmal shit stain of a game, Starforge. Congratulations, Code Hatch. We love you.